My Favorite Game by Eric. My sister and I like to go scuba diving. One day we went diving near the Channel Islands in California. This is going to be fun. Ready to go? I was very excited because we were going to play my favorite game. It's called Find the Octopus. We swim around underwater looking for an octopus. The first person to find one wins. Octopuses are great at hiding. They can change their colors to match almost anything, even a rock on the ocean floor. Let's go into that cave. We decided to swim into an underwater cave. Lots of other animals were swimming around in there too. I spotted something moving on the wall of the cave, so I swam up close. It wasn't an octopus, though. It was a giant green anemone waving its tentacles in the water. We dove deeper into the cave. I was sure there had to be an octopus down there somewhere. And I was right. I won the game. Can you see the octopus? There it is! Wow! The major oceans. From space, most of the Earth looks blue because most of the Earth is covered by oceans. The Earth's biggest ocean is the Pacific Ocean. Next in size are the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. But the Pacific Ocean is bigger than both of these oceans put together. Except for the continents, there are no dividing lines between the oceans. All of the oceans are connected to one another. This means the oceans are really one huge body of water. Oceans make up all but 3% of the Earth's water. The rest of the Earth's water is found in rivers, in lakes, in polar ice caps, and underground. People don't use ocean water for drinking because it is too salty. Ocean water is about as salty as a spoonful of salt in a large glass of water. If you could pour all the salty ocean water off the earth, only a tiny amount of water would be left. This water is fresh water with very little salt in it. People and land animals can drink fresh water. The water cycle. Do you know some of the water you showered in today may have been spouted from a whale last month? Our Earth's water moves around, but the same water is used again and again. There is almost the same amount of water on Earth today as there was a thousand years ago. Water moves from the surface of the Earth to the air and back to the Earth again as rain or snow. This is called the water cycle. Energy from the sun heats the Earth. 
As water in the Earth's oceans, lakes, and rivers heats up, some of it changes to a gas. This gas, called water vapor, rises into the air. When water vapor cools, it forms clouds of liquid water drops. These drops may fall to the Earth as rain. If the air is cold, sleet or snow may fall instead. Then the cycle starts all over again. The Channel Islands Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary Sanctuary means place of protection. Certain areas of the ocean have been set aside as marine or ocean sanctuaries. Rules protect these sanctuaries so everyone can enjoy them. The focus of this fact book is the Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary and the nearby area. This sanctuary, set aside by the United States government in 1980, lies off the California coast. It includes the area of the Pacific Ocean that surrounds the Channel Islands. The ocean waters of this sanctuary hold many treasures such as kelp forests, numerous ocean animals, and underwater shipwrecks. Warm and cool ocean currents meet here. They bring together living things from the north and the south. The Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary lies in the Pacific Ocean, northwest of Los Angeles, California. Though the islands themselves are not part of the sanctuary, they are part of the Channel Islands National Park. The name Channel Islands comes from the deep channel between the islands and the mainland. The Channel Islands Chumash People The Chumash are the Native Americans of the Channel Islands. They lived on the islands and the nearby California coast for thousands of years. Many people with Chumash ancestors still live in the area. The Chumash people used the natural resources around them. They made baskets, sleeping mats, and dome-shaped houses from wild plants. They used shells for dishes and money. For food, they caught fish in the ocean, found shellfish along the shore, and gathered nuts and seeds from plants. Chumash people loved contests and games like kickball. They played flutes made from bones. For special ceremonies, dancers dressed as animals. Some wore headdresses that looked like swordfish. The Chumash on the Channel Islands made beads from shells of the purple olive snails. People in the area used these shell beads as money. Eight strings of shell beads were worth one Spanish silver dollar. The Chumash traded shell beads for tools and food not available on the islands. Chumash Stories The Chumash people told stories to explain their world. This story tells how some of the Chumash came to live on the coast of California. It also explains how dolphins came to be. Long ago, the earth goddess, Hutash, made the very first Chumash people. They lived on one of the Channel Islands in the Pacific Ocean. In time, more people were born, and the island became crowded and noisy. Hutash decided something must be done. Some of the people would have to leave the island. Hutash built a rainbow bridge from the island to the coast. Some of the people crossed the bridge safely. Others fell off into the water. Hutash felt sad and changed these people into dolphins. What became of the Chumash? In 1542, Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo set out with three ships to explore the Pacific coast north of Mexico and claim the lands for Spain. 
When Cabrillo's ships reached the Channel Islands, many Chumash went out in their canoes to meet them. The Chumash traded shell beads for food. Later, Spain set up missions along the California coast. Chumash people went to the missions. There, they farmed, took care of sheep and cattle, and did other work. Soon, no Chumash were left on the Channel Islands. In time, the missions closed. The Chumash people continued to live throughout the area. Today, many Chumash are working together to make sure their old Chumash ways are not forgotten. Environmental Concerns Gifts from the Ocean People enjoy oceans and use them for swimming, fishing, boating, and water sports. We eat ocean fish and seafood. We use ocean highways for shipping. Much of our oil and natural gas comes from beneath the ocean floor. About three out of every four people in the United States live near the Atlantic or Pacific coasts. Many of these people depend on the ocean for their jobs. For example, on the west coast near the Channel Islands, many people make a living by catching fish and other seafood. Kelp harvesters collect seaweed called giant kelp, which is used in making ice cream and shampoo. Our oceans are valuable. We all need to work together to protect them. Environmental Concerns Oil spills. People drill into the ocean floor to get oil and natural gas. This can cause oil spills and leaks, which harm ocean life. Ships carrying oil may crash into each other or onto rocks, sending oil all around. Large amounts of oil wash into the ocean when ships that have carried oil clean out their tanks. Even more oil enters the ocean from spills on land or in rivers as oil is being moved from one place to another. Oil is hard to clean up because it spreads quickly. Certain soaps can help, but most oil from spills never gets cleaned up. It may wash up on beaches. In 1989, a huge oil tanker traveling off the coast of Alaska hit some rocks and began to leak oil. Soon, oil spread all along the coastline. The accident killed hundreds of thousands of ocean animals. Oil spills similar to this one continue to happen throughout the world. Environmental Concerns How can I help? Here are some things you can do to help protect our oceans. 1. Learn about our ocean resources and tell others how important it is to protect them. If possible, join an organization that helps do this. 2. When you go to the beach, take a trash bag. Collect your own trash, and if an adult says it is safe, pick up the other trash you see. 3. If you fish in the ocean, keep only the fish you will eat. 4. Be sure your family uses cleaning products that are safe for the environment. What you pour down the drain can end up in the ocean. 5. Take old paint, weed killers, and other toxic products to a hazardous waste collection site. 6. When possible, carpool, bike, or walk to save our ocean resources of gas and oil. 7. Use tuna marked dolphin friendly or dolphin safe. It is caught without harming dolphins. 8. Hold on to helium balloons so they don't make their way to the ocean. Ocean animals can choke on them. 9. Follow the three R's. Reduce the amount of things you throw away, reuse things to avoid waste, and recycle what you can.
Mammals and Birds. True seals. True seals differ from sea lions and fur seals. A true seal has only small ear openings, not ears outside its body. Its front flippers are small, and its back flippers cannot be used for walking. True seals use their strong belly muscles to move across land. The elephant seal is a true seal named for the male's short, elephant-like nose. Elephant seals are big like elephants, too. The male can grow both longer and heavier than a car. Each year, elephant seals shed. They lose large, ragged patches of skin and hair. Harbor seals are small, true seals with spotted skin. They are shy and try to stay away from people. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Donna Stanger. I've been developing software for 14 years and was a teacher for 20 years before that. I've always been fascinated by how children learn and how we can help them. There are many different schools of thought on how to help children learn to write, but most educators agree that writing is a multi-step process. Let's take a look at one version of those steps. Pre-writing is a term used to describe anything that helps a child get ready to write. Children are ready to write when they believe that they have something to say. You can help with this by providing concrete experiences that are rich in sights and smells and sounds. It might be something as elaborate as a trip to the zoo or as simple as popping corn. In writing a first draft, the main thing is to just let the ideas flow. Don't worry about spelling or punctuation or even the order of things. You can go back and reorder later. Just help your child get the ideas out. Revision is probably the most important step of all, but unfortunately it's often the most neglected. Parents and teachers can work together to help children recognize that writing is a process. A first draft can be changed and played with until it says exactly what you want it to say. Maybe the ending can become a beginning, or maybe not. Computers have given us a powerful new way to make rewriting painless and to help children improve their writing. You know, it's very difficult for anyone to edit their own writing, so this is a great time for you to get involved with your child as an editor. In responding to a first draft, don't worry about spelling or punctuation. Just concentrate on exactly what your child is trying to say. Ask specific questions that will help your child clarify what the main character looked like or why he did what he did. All of the picky corrections should be saved for the proofreading stage. Help your child cross the T's and dot the I's, but be sure that these corrections don't become more important than the writing itself. Publishing is an opportunity for your children to share their writing and an added opportunity for you to demonstrate your pride in their work. Tools like Imagination Express allow publishing to take many forms. A poem hung on the refrigerator, a beautiful printed book sent to grandma, or an interactive story created to share with a friend. One of the best ways to help your child write more descriptively is by asking questions. How big was the whale? What did the sunken ship look like? How can you tell the dolphin from the porpoise? Your sincere interest is the very best writing encouragement. Destination Ocean includes a new tool that allows children to drag stickers anywhere on the background while recording the path of the sticker's movement. This recording is then played back like a movie to make your child's stories come alive. Oceans offers a visit to the Channel Islands where both warm and cold water marine life and a variety of underwater habitats flourish, where early Spanish explorers sailed and where gold rush shipwrecks and ancient Chumash ruins are discovered. If your child is a reluctant writer, you might encourage her to begin by telling a story with pictures. She can choose a background for each page and then slide the pages around as she plans the order in which the story will happen. Next, she can choose a few stickers for the main characters and put them on the appropriate pages. She may want to record her own voice narrating each page. At this point, you might suggest that she write what she has spoken so that her story can be printed out as a book. Given a choice, most children prefer to write fiction. What's most important is that your son enjoy writing and write often. To encourage more factual writing, you might look through the stickers in Destination Ocean with your son and select an animal or fish that catches his interest. Then suggest that your son look for that fish in the fact book. Reading about the plain thin midshipman might spark an interest in bioluminescence 
and bioluminescence might just find its way into your son's next story. All of us at Edmark want to share our love of learning with you and your child. Our goal is to ensure that if Edmark's name is on the product, there's a world of learning inside. As a parent, you are your child's first teacher, but you should be careful not to assume the role of giver of all knowledge. Consider instead the role of a coach who believes in the child and inspires the very best performance possible, or the role of a colleague who enjoys learning new things with the child, or the role of a resource who is there when needed but respects the child's learning space. The strongest teaching is through your own actions. Does your child ever see you write something over again because you know it can be better and you want to improve it? My grandfather used to tell me a story about when the Spanish first came to the Channel Islands. Sometimes I like to pretend like I was one of the Chumash people who paddled out to greet them. Hey, I bet that would make a cool ebook. Pretend you found the journal of a ship's captain who lived a hundred years ago. What would it say? There are places in the sea that used to be kelp forts before the sea urchin sailed all the kelp. Why don't you write a story about why that happened? The fact book can help you with the details. Here's an idea. Pick a letter from the alphabet and then write a story about all the ocean animals that begin with that letter. I like the letter S. You know, seal, seagull, squid. Where have all the sea otters gone? Thousands used to live along the Pacific coast, but there are very few left. Read about sea otters in the fact book. Then tell a story about what happened to them. One day, a diver was having so much fun. She didn't realize how dark it had become underwater. Tell a story about how a toadfish helped her find her way. <laughs> 